Hi there. I'm a bit pissed off right now. I just created the whole video. And it was way too long though. And I didn't record any sound. <laughs> I chose the wrong input into OBS. Shit. So I'll make this shorter. It will hit a fewer points though, but hopefully I can get get it done quicker. So what we're looking at here is in this video, we were just supposed to compare FL Studio Piano Roll versus Studio One Piano Roll in a kind of standoff. But after doing a bit of research and looking into some of the major complaints about the Studio One Piano Roll, I realized that a pure comparison, like, it wouldn't do anyone a favor. It would be sort of comparing apples to oranges, as they say. Like, in Northern Norway, we have this saying that goes like, What would we do without the ocean? Are we supposed to carry the boats? Without the ocean, they wouldn't be in the boats. So, I got a I got a point to this. Um, I'm gonna let's say a carpenter, right? Who just hates nail guns. He has been working as a carpenter his whole life and can't fathom why he won't just get a normal hammer anymore. He explained that it took him so many more strikes to punch the nails in with this new contraption that's a normal hammer would be su superior. So he came back and he said, like, this nail gun sucks. Right? Now, this is, that's obviously just a joke. I hope nobody tried hitting nails with nail guns that way. But it's fitting to this comparison. And it's why we have to include the chord track in Studio One and some other functions to fill out the function that's the piano roll that is expected to do in Studio One. Because the piano roll includes all these extra pop-up windows like flip and scale levels and uh, randomize and claw machine and all these small extra add-ons. Uh, the Studio One piano roll doesn't have that because it does things in another way. So... If you've done things a certain way over a period of time, you will approach new technology in the same way and with the perspective of, is this new thing capable of doing the same thing I did before in the same way I did it before? And if the answer is no, then you throw out the nail gun and you return to your hammer. So what is your goal or problem? Your problem isn't, I don't have a hammer, you're not digging deep enough at that point. You should get a shovel and find out what you really want, because... Your goal is something like this, like, oh, I want to test chords and chord progressions real quickly. It's like, I wish to connect two wooden boards together and have the ability to disassemble them later. And that would be like, oh, you don't need a hammer. You need a screwdriver, man. Which hammer? You don't need a nail gun either. You need a screwdriver. That's your objective. And uh, in Studio One, if you need to want to test out chord progressions, chord structures... Very quickly, you do not want to use the hammer approach of Studio One, not FL Studio, which is to put in the chords, major chord, minor chord, and test out that way. You would instead use the chord track for this sort of purpose. And the chord track, in my opinion, is superior to the piano roll way of doing it in FL Studio because it's more tailored toward that testing out chords approach. So... Um, and the chord track can also be used to uh, apply it to multiple uh, VSTs and multiple uh, even audio sources. So that's really interesting. And you can play just random rhythms on your keyboard and play a C chord everywhere and then have it follow the chord track and then it turns into the right chords. And by changing the way you think and thus the way you work, you might find an even more effective way of doing these things. So let's... Look at the piano roll of Evel Studio and see if we can find out why it's so popular and why people coming from Evel Studio dislike Studio One's uh, piano roll. So here we have the piano roll of uh, Evel Studio and we have the piano roll of Studio One. I've uh, measure them by size to have them quite equal in yeah size basically so here's the FL Studio one and if you want to play as a note 
you place a note by clicking, and if you change the size of it and click, you get the new note size with the next one. And if you want to select them, you hold control and you select them all, and you can delete them, you can move them all. But then there's a few things which is not as intuitive. Like you can change, uh, by holding Alt, you can avoid uh, snap to make them different volume. And then you need to click down here to change the actual volume of things. And yeah, there's not much more to it. You can choose paint tool to paint many, uh, Yeah, there's not... What else is there to say about the piano roll? There really ain't that much. You paint and you remove. And you change the size, you click the one you want, and you can place that size again. And everything here goes in bars. So if you choose the quantize, you can see... Or beats, I mean. It's a half beat. It's not a quarter note. And it's a fourth beat. Not a eighth note. No, I mean, it's, this is an eighth and this is a sixteenth, and these are triplets. And this one is a fourth note, and this is a whole note, and there's not a half note. There's not a half note quantize. And the reason why it's like this is because everything is, you take a bar and you divide it down instead of... <laughs> Uh, you take a beat and divide it down instead of the normal music terminology where you take beat, no, a bar, and you put it down. Ah, beats and bars. Beats are bam, 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 bam. That's four beats. Bam, tsh, bam, tsh. that's four beats. And that's one bar. And in normal music theory, everything goes in bars. Like a fourth, a quarter note is one bar. Like four quarter notes is a bar because it's four beats in a bar. Uh, eighth notes is eight notes per bar. So everything is in bar. But in FL Studio, they went with the beats approach. Everything goes by beats. You divide the beat into two, the beat into three, the beat into four. So triplets is like these um, uh, eight notes triplets are the normal triplets in FL Studio. I, it's even hard almost to get like triplets in anything else than 8th and 16 triplets. So, and any, any sort of like quintuplets and stuff is, uh, that's not easy to achieve. Here we got uh, one of the major things which people like is uh, melodic scales and you can place a C scale there and you can watch it here like okay I want to use this scale to make a melody and oh and change the quantize setting I want to make a melody in this scale well this is much easier done in studio one where you can just let's add a part here by holding control Sorry about that. And here, if you want to stick to E major scale, you just click the scale button, choose the scale, and every note snaps to that. Um, what's it called? Every note snaps to that uh, scale. And if you choose the brush tool or the paint tool, you can paint notes like in FL Studio, and you can click the notes to remove them. And if you want to remove multiple notes, you just select them. Because here it's double clicking. But yeah, here the comparison is the scale thing. So you, why would you ever draw a scale like that? I don't know. You can just click here and you get the scale. <laughs> uh, in FL Studio, other than that, the major point is you get to choose chords. You get to use chords like this. You can place chords and then you do, oh, I want a minor, do, 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 minor there. And then never really found this that useful because just looking at these took way too long for me. Like, uh, I want, and then you're like, oh shit, I don't know what any of these mean because I'm a total newbie. M6 at nine? Okay. Uh, 
let's just choose random. And when you first placed one, changing it, I'll go up. Uh, where was I? It's just a hassle. And we'll get into that later, why the Studio One way of doing it is better, in my opinion. Uh, you got Chop, of course, to chop things up into small pieces. And if we choose to chop, you can chop it. Easy, 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 cool. And if you want to scale levels, like you want these notes here to have different volume on everyone, you can just go there, scale levels, and multiply them by a certain amount. Or you can even randomize the levels and have them go up and down. And this is the pan level release, blah, 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 blah. You can just automate everything like that. Now, that is basically mostly everything. The one thing that this uh, playlist has over any other is the ability to slide, make slide notes. So you can make slide notes that only works with the native instruments, like uh, not native instruments to company, but com <laughs> instruments native to FL Studio, like Slice X or no, Slice X. Yeah, but it works there too, but I meant Citrus and Flex and whatever. So if you use those a lot, the light nodes are great. Because the channel pitch thing here, so many times, I've made like this perfect slope to get 150, not 200 cents, let's say, and we get two, ah, 203, close enough. And then you're like, okay, here it's going to be zero again. Uh, come on, come on, come on, there, let's go, boom. No, why? Why is it so hard to make channel pitch? So you will, would use automation clips. Like I would turn this into an automation clip real quick by clicking edit and turn it into an automation clip because I freaking hate that. And even if you make like stepped uh, automation, you can use the input alert button, but you have no control over these. And it's just so hard to draw something nice in this auto this automation lane right here is almost, to me, almost useless basically it's useless i hate it I, I i hate it so much just i can't stand it i've got so many times i've made like this perfect automation and it's either in the wrong spot so it's fucked up anyway or i click here to reset and it just messes up what i've done so i need to go back i don't like it now, for the hotkeys, you have P for pain tool and B for brush tool and you get C for cut tool and T for mute tool. Um, well, every, everything you expect is there. Quantize, strum for make strumming, like all these extra things. Now, let's compare. We go to Studio One, turn off the scale thing, and the first thing you notice is instead of single clicking, Unless you have the paint tool on. Instead, you don't want to single click, you want to double click to make a note. <laughs> when you double click, you can also remove notes with the same double click. And instead of double clicking a note to open this panel, let's see here. You got this panel here. See this? Uh, in Studio One, instead of that panel, you instead have this side panel here which is always open so if you the second you click a note you uh, get to see what's going on the smart tool here lets you chop up notes com combine them together change the velocity without clicking down here so you can just change velocity of notes especially useful if you want to add in multiple notes and just click there and then you do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if you add the, uh, use this, you can draw, but instead you can also just hold control and then you can add notes by clicking once, just the same as FL Studio. And then you click again to remove them. And if you want to remove a whole batch, uh, you will either have to use the delete tool and just do that, or you could just 
do what normal people do and tra- click control alt and just remove everything. Um, normal people, <laughs> lol. And you can make lines. Uh, let's see if I find out. Because now we come to another tool. Let's check this one out. The this one, which is also on view, additional views, info view shows you the context menu. So if I hold, hold over the playlist, you will see the context menu here. Uh, click for draw, alt to make a line, control to get the arrow tool, blah, 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 blah. So if I have the, the arrow tool, it says click twice to draw. And it says draw selection. Now, if you hold shift, you can add to the selection. If you hold the control, you get the paint tool. And let's now try to click and make something and see what happens to the context menu. So here I made a note. And if I, oh, how am I going to do this? If I hold control, okay, I need to show this screen while doing this. And now I'm holding control down. I'm using the paint tool and say, if you hold alt, you make a line. It didn't change the screen. Wait a second. Ah, uh, there. And I can make a line like this. Now another m- major difference here in the piano roll is if I click, I get this side of no- size of notes. And if I change the size of this and I click again, it's still this this size. Why? Because this doesn't follow the recently added notes. Which in some cases are very great because if you suddenly made a super long note and you try to add a note in FL Studio, it suddenly becomes super long. You use the cut tool, cut it, you remove the long half, and then you switch to the short half. Here, you can either follow by here, the default, I think, follow quantize, and I got quantize on my mouse, so I can add notes in the size of the quantize by just double clicking or single clicking like this. And then by changing the quantize, because I got plus and minus buttons on my mouth co- connected to the quantize. So you can make triplets and just, if you want triplets. And you can also quantize to, let's say you want 32 notes and you make one long and you want to chop this up. You click there, you choose uh, musical functions. Mm, where is it? Mm, mm, select notes no that's not what we're doing we're not applying scale humanizing fill with notes random notes extend notes parts Mm. merge events that's not what we're doing either where is my chop notes Why didn't I see it? I I looked at it so many times, and I know it's there, and I didn't see it. This is because I'm recording again, probably. It's right here. Split it grid. Boom. And then, if you want to split it finer, 64 times, you can just choose split it grid. And if you want it smaller, or just split in two, boom. So, there's no chop tool. You just choose the grid size, and you just click split. And that will also use, uh, if you have uh, added swing to the grid, because you can you can use swing to change the grids, and then you can uh, add um, add the chops to the swing, basically. So if you go here and add lots of swing, you see the grid actually shifts. So now if I chop the grid. It will chop with swing. You don't need to use the chop tool or the quantize tool and quantize the grid afterwards. You can actually just chop it straight to the grid and have swing on every note. That's just commending Studio One for that one. That's better than having to go here and choosing a note and then control U, I guess. Alt U there. And then finding the right multiplier, like, oh, fuck, I move the nodes, nah, 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 go in, select, uh, choose quantize, uh, pick, uh, swing 
oh, it's the wrong swing type. What do I do? No, you can't change it any smaller. So you go like, oh, third beat. Ah, oh. this is not a good quantizer. In my opinion, this is not good. If I return now to Studio One and I want to add swing to this one and chop it up, I click there, I choose split it grid after adding some triplet with swing. Boom. Now it follows. And yeah, perfect. So there we go. <laughs> That's a bit quick. <laughs> but That's easy. That Like, great. You can even add your own grooves. Uh, you can also have groove presets. Let's go with this weird ass grooves right here and you can drag them on to things you wish to quantize and you can let's say if you choose here and yeah you want to quantize something after this but that was way too few notes uh let's see if we got something more busy you see now it doesn't follow the grid even it just follows that groove and the, the groove mapping is is another video. It's it has a lot of uses. You can groove map like if I make an event with a lot, with a certain groove, or I can also extract grooves from samples and then have MIDI follow that groove, and that will be my quantization point. So you can quantize VSTs to a loop uh, by. Uh, having it mimic the tempo and also the timing. No, <laughs> the timing, tempo, and the volume of the groove of that recording. So that's great. Uh, so now you got the quantize done. The quantize stuff is the good to go. And yes, but if you wish to make like long notes and you want to, uh, let, let, let's go and make these half notes. The problem now is half notes will only snap to half note grid because I got snap on and I got this length is controlled by the snap, the, the grid, the quantize, I mean. So you can't add them to the middle here and that's a problem. You turn off then this length connected to grid and you can control them individually. So now I can add a second, a half note to here, let's say. So I can now, boom, place them anywhere on the grid there because they're disconnected. So the difference here is you choose your node length here or by quantizing and you can just shuffle through them. But the other way of doing it, which is great, which is not in FL Studio, is to just draw the length. Like if you hold control and not release it right away, you get full control. Let's go 1-1. One, one. You see? And if I Instead of releasing it, I hold it. Wait a second, I didn't know that if you made a 1-1, one, one, you couldn't make it shorter. That's weird. Okay, cool. But then if you make an 8th, if 8th is your, you can do that. But if you want to make it any size, you just hold shift anyway, because it snaps to grid. Ah, oh, that's why it didn't work. It snaps to grid. I'm dumb. What the fuck? You need to, if I turn off the grid and then make a 1-1. Ah, one, one. Oh, fuck. You can also double click and just hold. And the cool thing when you um, uh, hold control and draw, drag. So let's add the 8th and hold the control and drag and shift. You can change the... Um, now I can hold control and shift and you can change the length. But up and down also changes the volume of the notes. You can place the note... Uh, first like the way you want it let's say you want it there and then change the volume before releasing it boom so you and you can also audition that but now let's get to the big part the drawing of notes or notes chords and scales scales we have already done you saw it was easier to just lock in a scale in studio one but let's say I want, oh, I want to draw chords because I want to quickly find out how this chord progression will work. 
that is not done in the piano roll at all. You need to drop that thought. You don't wish to draw chords in the piano roll at all. If you want to figure out how a chord progression works, you will have to just do use the chord track instead. And it sounds like, oh no, do I have to? Yes, you want to use the chord track. It's great. It's so great. The chord track, you, you, you will learn to love it. So let's add a E minor chord here. That's not what we're going for, but let's say we, we take an E minor then. Let's add an E minor 7. And let's add, after that, let's have a little... E minor 7 and then a... G9. Yeah. That's nice. And then let's hear. Here you see play track, okay? And we already I already did this before. I chose my tie as the instrument to preview. That's cool. And let's do it like this instead. A bit quick so let's turn down the tempo still a bit quick so let's instead just return to the old tempo and just make it longer make it go further so we can instead use this And then let's add more of them and let's go all the way here and then let's add after this G and another chord of B minor C minor what happened then and then another chord Just a normal D. Let's go. Uh, let's change this chord. To didn't work Okay, dee dee. Okay, it's probably something with a G again. Something like this. long one here and then and then you you're like okay but what am I going to use this for 
you turn off the play track, you just drag it down, and then you can edit it. So let's now, I want to edit all these at the same time, not in individual parts. So I'll go to musical functions, no events, I mean, and merge events. I have my own hockey G. So now everything here is in this playlist. And then I click uh, control. Or I don't even do that. I just click actions. Control. Why am I saying so many weird things? I meant that I click this secondary mouse button. But I'll click actions instead because that will give me the right controls. Instead of selecting all notes first. And then I choose select notes. And I wish to select the lowest notes. All the lowest notes. Boom. And I can click shift. Arrow down. And I got a bass. And then we want to we want to create this one maybe. We add this one. And then a D. This on top. Let me add this C on top here because that fits the melody and that B. Add this and then add this. There we got a test going. And then we can Remove this, add this up here again, and see what changes with it. Okay, this actually recognizes this as a G instead because the the bass being changed, and this is a D5 over B, and this is a C6, and then a D7. Let's try B. That works, and let's remove this off, not that one. So let's try now, it's D6. Cool. Now we can probably move these down and these two. I didn't like that down there. And then you got another function here in the piano roll, which is to move them according to each other to just change timings. Like if I was this start earlier, you can just boom. that it will tell you all these uh because resize event is normal just like that and then resize adjacent events it will say here on the uh if you look at the information view you will see that it says alt equals resize adjacent events and normal is just resize events and then you got this other these other things that's going on right here you can also use the chord track to add another instrument and just play random shit. I'm gonna do that first with piano V2. Let's let's just go crazy. And now I'll, I'll just record some random shit. Okay, check this out. Only in C major.
it's random. Ah, uh, but anyways, let's quantize it a bit. It's so false. But then let's click here, follow chord in parallel now, narrow. And it changes the chords that was played. Still sounds horrible though. <laughs> let's tune it down a bit. Uh, transpose it down 12 semitones. Come on. <laughs> Fucked up. But still, it follows the chords, and that's cool. And especially if you want to make a like easy, uh, easy bass line, and you just follow first. Let's just draw uh, the timings correctly. Uh, it would be like this, wouldn't it? And then I get a long one here, and then there's boom there. So let's now make this into a bass line, right? We click here, insert narrow, which is bass, boom. The only thing with this one was high. misunderstood this one or I didn't misunderstand it I just didn't create a long enough uh, loop because you see up here the D's here so you could just draw a D or you could just draw it down here and just have it reset it by click follow come on follow the bass So that's a way to do it. That's great. Uh, other things, if you create a... Let's delete this stuff for now. And let's create... Notes of different lengths. Just quickly by doing this. And then we say we all want these notes to stop at the same time. You can select all, click control, and then just... Oh, you see what this is? I did the wrong thing. And let's go to the info view again. And hold here, click control. It says... Resize events. And when you click it, do you still still see the right screen? Nah, you don't. Okay, there. You see, control is common length. Control alt is common end. The difference is if I click control, it's every one of these became the same length of notes. If I click control and alt, they all get the same stop point. And then they all, bam, stop at the same time. That's great. So if I just want to draw some quick shit right there, and I just want them all to end at the same time, I click Control, Alt, boom. And then you can quantize them to get them to start at the same time, probably too. Boom. <laughs> and then, ah, uh, I want them to end at the same time. And also, if you want these notes to have the same length, you can just uh, control, it is there, and you can choose the length of them, and then have them shift them relative to each other, and then have the same stop. Boom. So that's three different modifiers, it's control, alt, and control, and alt at the same time. And then if you want to shift a note, like in small increments and like, you hold shift instead of alt. In a FL Studio, it's alt. So if you hold control and you want, you want a melody quick, you want, you want. And there's quick. And then you want to make a line like this, but then that line is random. So you want to follow a chord, you would click scale, E major, let's say E major. Why can't I get my scale? Why can't I... Oh, I see why. No, it didn't matter. That's weird. Oh. 
Okay, I I'm surprised. I, I just on that instrument, I couldn't choose a chord scale, but now I can. That's just weird. So that's a C major. I don't want to make a line like this. It will now follow the scale. So if you want to make a in the right scale, you can just do this. Boom. Mm, now, where were we? We have covered the chord track and how to audition chords. Ah, oh, the transform tools and the automation. If you want to make a slide right here, you can just use the transform tool and create a slide. You can also just draw it like um, if you get the freehand tool, please. And then you can just draw like this, of course, as an FL. Uh, you could con hold control while using the normal tool. Or you can use the line tool to get a perfect line. Boom. If you wish for a line. But then after you made a line with the volume, you can use the transform tool and you can choose and you can choose to turn everything down. You can choose to make ramps the other way. You can choose to make ramps bigger, these and lots of stuff like that. Boom. So that's cool. And for pitch bending, this is so much better than the FL Studio way, is to, if you want to automate pitch, you get the same as you would get in um, an automation clip. You get lots more control, and you can also see the... You can see the... Um, the volume, let's say, while you see this uh, pitch bend. And you can also, if you click the Mai Tai and you choose the cutoff, you can add that by clicking the button here. And then I need to change screen. Oh, it changed the screen automatically. Did it? Yeah, it did. Nice. Oh, cool. Even if I didn't release it. And then I can add it to here. So I can have now three things. I can have the cutoff, the pitch bend, and the volume at the same time. And then also... Just random though. And let's say I made these in the wrong lengths like this here. And I want them to be legato. Boom. And I want no overlap. Boom. Because this is the macro page music editing you also get music creation where you can select the low notes the high notes or deselect them or reverse the selection so let's choose high and then reverse selection and get the low and you can fill fill a <laughs> i don't use these too much because it's like randomized pitch, velocity, length, shuffle, thin out notes, simplify the creation. I like to use music editing where you can uh, chord up, chord down, transpose, and all these other things like having a note filter, which is the note select. You can choose a range, choose all notes within this range, choose the lows, choose the highest. You can humanize it all by clicking here. It offers it's a bit randomly you can also get more precision when doing that oh sorry um what more yeah if you have this turned on if you have points within the selection like if we said like these three notes and i had this turned on and i move these notes the automation will follow let's say i choose these four and i want to move them over here It takes the automation there with them. So you see the po points light up. So if I take these two and make this a little bit longer, longer, I said, and I choose these two, I can move this curve. And even the pitch, pitch bend. Um, this you can't do in FL Studio. And... 
yeah, what, what, what else? <laughs> what else do we need to know now? Um, the chop function we have already looked at. Uh, there are more musical functions here, like apply the scale, freeze the pitch, uh, distribute new notes, randomize them, thin them out, fill, mirror. These are the same as flip and all that stuff. So if you want to randomize stuff, you can do it here. Note lengths. You can also randomize velocity. It's the same as the randomize tool in FL Studio. And the uh, transform tool can also be used here by so you can switch things around and make all kinds of weird stuff happen. Wee. If you wish to. And yeah, if you want to make a... The LFO tool is also... You just do this. You just choose the LFO you wish to have and you just make an LFO. Like this. Triangle waves. And then you can, of course, modify them. If you click Alt and you select the points you wish to shift around. So if you want to have this... Um, uh, what's it called? This special shape you can just select the points you wish to and you can also use the transform tool like um, uh, more discreet is that the right thing to say and ah uh, come on and just make a ramp with the lfo too if you wish to it's really simple nice and I would not go back to this shit. Because this thing... Ah! It just gets on my nerves. Because I've used so... M you can't understand how many years I've used. And just having to make like a part automation. Kind of. And then go to... Uh, where is it? Uh, turn into automation clip. And then choose the threshold of how many points you wish to have. It's just such a hassle. And why? How is this like how is this play this piano roll better? That's my question. This automation section sucks. Like it totally sucks. It sucks so bad. You can't have more than one. Uh, even the channel pitch stuff it, it's, it, it, this is just horrible like you can choose paint tool and you, 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 but this is still horrible this is horrible it's just horrible and uh, this if you want to use this in an amino from well let's say you want a seventh chord there and you're like uh I want this where <laughs> you can't you, you can't really audition them in any meaningful way while in studio one using the chord tool here you can just listen through the different chords and choose whichever type you want to oh is this an augmented chord i didn't know i never bothered to check it out in fl studio because the chord list is so long and going through a list like that placing listen going through the list again finding a new one placing it in the same place that just takes so much more time than just You can also change the notes here and see what chord you come up with. That's a scary one. <laughs> <laughs> Having multiple. So there you see, you can get the intervals and if you hold alt, you can get all intervals up to that interval. To get really fat chords. You can make the chord anywhere and then you can just drag this chord into the event like here and you get the chord. 
And let's say the problem is you want a major chord right here. And you want, know you want a major chord because you know a little bit about music theory and shit. Why don't you just make a... I want an E major. I can't break the scale. I need to do this. And then you just do that. You couldn't hear that, but that's a major chord. <laughs> it's an E major. Okay, let's make a C major. Because it doesn't take that much time. And also, making like cool bass lines is really easy when you can just hold shift and control and just getting them perfectly like this. Oh, this is a pad, so it's hard to hear. And then you make this one, two, and you want them all, all these two to end at the same point. You click and you... And then you add some pitch bend. And then you can snap it back to zero, because that's also a thing with this, is getting it back to zero. Because if you delete the point, uh, here, like this, it doesn't go back to zero. So you have to find the zero again, and you... Ah, and it destroys your shit! And it destroys your shit. <laughs> so basically, if you want to use Apple Studio, you don't use this thing at all, basically. You make it into automation clips, and you fill the playlist with those automation clips. Which is also really easy in Studio One, you can just choose any parameter and just place it anywhere you want and you can just bleh, do this and you can just let's say you make two points and you just drag up here and you can change the value there and bah, you're done now this is overrided by this one right here remove So yeah, I think I think that's everything I wanted to point out. Um, what more would it be? Glue, uh, yeah, glue and st oh shit, yeah, I showed the OBS. Let's see, glue is basically the same as this one. You cut and you glue. You just click with the mouse. It depends on where you're clicking a note. If you have a bit pre note, no, yeah, uh, mouse precision, you can just uh, there. And let's say you change the velocity of this one, and then you go like, oh, no, I want that as a full note. So if I really now want to build a melody quickly, I just go. Let's do this. Ding, ding, doo, 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 doo. And if you want a chord and you place two, you see quickly what it is. It's a diminished chord because it says right here what it is, what kind of chord it is. So this is an F sharp minor. And then if you move them around, you will see different sort of chords. Oh, that's a sus4, you see? And yeah. I really think this is everything, and that means that this video is done. It's recording number two, and it's over three. Ah, the time just went away today because I made this twice. And it got quite a long winded, but ah, I forgot one thing. One thing. This will be quick. This will be quick. Uh, this view. If you have multiple instruments, it's so easy to see everything you got going on and even to copy parts uh, into different instruments like this. By using this. Uh, and let's make an F.
Oh, wait a second. We need this one. <laughs> it's ugly as shit. But you get the point, right? If you just keep adding instruments, let's copy this completely. It's very easy now to have a look here at what's going on. And you have the drum view, of course, and the midi view, and in the midi view you can also show ghost notes, and you can also edit different parts at the same time, and they are sorted by color by default, you can sort them by velocity and pitch, but why would you? Like, you want to see the different parts, so you can edit the different instruments. Oh, now I just edited two at the same time, like that. There's the Mai Tai and there's the piano. And yeah, in FL Studio, if you want to do the same, you can use Ghost Notes, which is uh, helpers. Where are helpers? View helpers. Do they change the naming? You can change the uh, visibility, you know, how the piano roll looks more in FL Studio. Not the color scheme scheme but the uh the v piano view thing <laughs> and you can have the waveform show up in the background i'm like this oh let's take another one let's go to keyboard style and we can choose dark boom so there's a little bit of customization there which isn't in studio one um Ah, there you are. Editable, go editable ghosts, ghosts and ghost channels. That means if I add notes here and then add, duplicate that, uh, let's see, I duplicate this clone, it's called here. And I clone it and I go into the uh, new piano roll and I can see the old notes and I can even edit them. Uh, so let's then choose a color of some new notes here and see what happens when we go back. You can't see the color. So this is also, the ghost note system is also inferior because here you can actually see what it is by looking here. And you can choose here to which type of instrument you wish to edit at the same time. And you can choose to see just two, everything, just one. Instead of in FL Studio, if your, um, what's it called, if your pattern has tons and tons and tons of different instruments with different types of notes, and you just, it just looks like this. And when you then go to change a part and you're like, oh, what the, stangaga? what is this? There's no color, there's nothing. Why? Why? Who figured this out? Like... How can you change the color of them? Maybe you change the channel color and then you change the color. But the other, who does? Nobody does this. Like who goes in and change this color in hope of having it show up here? Nobody. And it doesn't even work. Like you thought, like oh, this would work. It seems like I hate Devil Studio, but I don't. I like it. But it's very nerdy and has some simple. Like it is. It expects the user to get around these things and do things more manually instead of just helping you getting through it. It gives you a ton of possibilities. It opens up every door. It's almost like Reaper in that sense where you can not customize FL Studio that much, but within FL Studio, the routing and everything is very Reaper-like where you can do just anything. The VSTs are super strong, like Maximizer is crazy. Like the things, the things you can do in Maximizer is just crazy. The things you can do in Harmor is crazy. Flex is powerful as shit. Like all the plugins in FL Studio are top notch, but the integration within the ecosystem is more like, yeah, we have just slapped everything together and nothing talks. 
to not anything, but you can make it talk to anything. Like you can make a P controller talk to a fader in the console, or you can make it talk to a you can make a P controller be controlled by a kick, and you can make that control the cutoff of a VST instrument, which talks to like everything can be mapped, everything can be done. You can even make your own like uh, to make curves. You can uh, use your create your own small. It's not algorithm. What's it called? Uh, what's it called? If I choose here and I choose link to controller and I choose formula. You can create your own formulas. That's what I'm trying to say. And very often I do this, like I place 0 0.5 divided by 2. Oh, 0 0.5 divided by 2. Uh, or no, divided by input times 2. 0.5 so then the input is a lot more if you have small inputs. And you can also use the input divided by two times. Let's do times input divided by two. And let's say you have this. And let's say also you have the input times two. And then you have 0 0.2, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> to get the right curve. Now... In Studio One, you would most likely do this with a GUI. You wouldn't write the formulas, but you wouldn't be able to do this with the internal controllers and everything. But other than that, the piano roll itself, I don't think it's special. I don't see any feature here that is lacking in Studio One. I just see features in FL Studio that lacks. Yeah, in FL Studio. <laughs> no, I mean, I see features in Studio One that lacks in FL Studio, not the other way around. Because if I want to preview chords here and I have to go through this darn list, or if I want to follow a scale and I need to create this one here and then follow it because I saw it in some random YouTube tutorial, it is a hassle. It, 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 you can't get around that. That this is just this is just too much. It's a mess for me. After changing, this is just too much, and I can't believe I put up with it. Because I was like the guy who would go on every YouTube video and be like, I feel studio can do this too. You just need to. And then I got 30 years old almost. And I figured like, mm, maybe I shouldn't use all my energy on making things work in the program I love. And maybe go with the times and use something that just works. If it just works. It just works. <laughs> that, that's my new mentality. So, yeah, but I, I really recommend still FL Studio for, yeah, even beginners. Because if you learn FL Studio, I would say you could do any, like getting into Ableton Logic Studio One will be a little bit different, but it's much harder to go from Logic Ableton Studio One into FL Studio than the other way around. Because if you first figured out FL Studio, you should be so uh, uh, intermediate or advanced in finding solutions to things that every other program is just a downgrade, basically. It's just easier. That's the way I see it. Because, yeah, Studio, then FL Studio can be super easy if you just throw in samples into this one here. And you just throw samples and you and you use this one. You had got the FL Studio Fire and you just create fire beats by making the, the which would be this one if you added. Wait a second, come on. <laughs> That's that rhythm. And you just add swing here, and you're like, ooh, damn, that swing. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah, so it can be easy. It was the first thing I picked up in music, except from Dan CJ. But when you get more advanced, 
you either become seamless R and a total nerd, or you want to get music written and you change programs. <laughs> like, and I love seamless R. <laughs> no, but I'm done. This went way too long. Everybody who got to this outro, I commend you that you heard me ramble for the last few minutes or half an hour, whatever, how long it's been. But now I got to sign out. Got to sign out. Bye-bye.